Welcome to Excel with Mark and what we're going to be looking at today is the sum ifs, average ifs and count ifs within our data. And what we're going to start to look at really quickly is if you can see we have the data here and within this data then we have regions, products, countries and the sales that we have for them. And we can see that we've got a couple of questions over at the side here where we're getting asked things. So can we find the total sales for the below criteria? and then we need to be working this out. So for the first of all, what we can do to work this out is we can use the sum if function like so. And we can see when we open the sum if function, we get the range, the criteria, and then the sum range. So we need to start thinking about where is the range? So where are we going to find this value? And we know that we're going to find it here within this column between A2 and A25. We can then press the comma to move on to the next one and the criteria that we want is self and then the sum range that we're going to be adding for the sales here is going to be down here in column D. We can then close parentheses and press OK and then once we've done that we can see that we get the value here. We're now going to be looking at how we can get two criteria and for this one we can't just use the sum if as we did before. We need to start thinking about adding in more so we're going to use the sum if and with the s on the end so sum ifs and we can open it up and you can see that the way that this is laid out is a little bit different to what it was before and what we're looking at as we can see that the sum range that we want is actually now at the beginning of this formula rather than at the end so we're just going to put in the sum formula that we have here for the beginning in column d and now we get a little bit of a different way of doing things in terms of criteria. So we can see that we have criteria range one and where would we find that? So our first criteria is the region. So we want to select all down there. And then what is our criteria? And we know that's south. And then we can press the comma again. And now it's just asking us straight away for our second criteria. So we want the shirt white. So we can press that down, press the comma, and we can press shirt white there. Once we've done, close the parentheses and press enter and we can see that that's added up nicely there. So we should just be able to copy this down into this cell here. But when we've moved it down, obviously it's going to move all of the different things here. So we can just double click into it and you can see that things have just moved down a little bit. So we just need to butcher them back up a little bit there and just make sure that we're not missing out any of the rows that we would potentially need. And we can just add in this extra criteria that we need here within number three. So we can say criteria three is going to be this column. And we know that the criteria that we want to hit is going to be the USA. So we can add that in there and we can see that that's just dropped it down a little bit as when we had it before, um, we weren't including USA. So there must have been some UK shares in there. So once we've got to this point, then we can start to work on operators. So we want this one to be more than 100. So we use the sum ifs function again for this one. And we know that all the time for this one, our first range that we need to do is our sum range. So once we've got the sum range, we then need the criteria. So we can build this out and we have the self that we would need for that one. We have criteria range two, which we want to be down here for shirt white and then the criteria range here is above 100 so we know that this needs to be in this part here and above 100 so we can see that we get our result there but what happens with this then is you can change this a little bit so when you have h7 here if you wanted to put the formula or the um, operator directly in there you need to put it in quotation marks so much for this um so you'd have to pop it in like so so you could pop it 100 like that and then press enter on that just to get the exact same one you could do it in the sense of you know leaving the operator in there and putting the and in and then using this if this was just a number so if we just change that to 100 then we can see that we get the same number there but it always has to be within the um, apostrophe is up there that we can do, so the quotation marks are, and then at least that way, then it's going to understand what it's doing. And for the shirt white part that we had here as well, what you could do is when you're working on this, if you wanted to put this in, um, you know, straight away, then you could again put that into the quotation marks 
and do it. But if you, for whatever instance, think that there may be um, some errors within that, so if we left it at white like that, we could see that it's not bringing up anything and that we're going to get a return value of zero. But if we just pop in a wildcard here, just in case you think that somebody is going to place any spelling mistakes or anything within there, then you can just break that out there. And you're still going to get the same results. So you've only got to get shirt WH and then Excel's clever enough to pick up the rest of it for you and understand where that will be for you. And it's a great thing to use. And, you know, it's been there, there just in place, just in case somebody pops in a spelling mistake in this part down here. So that being said, then with the sum, we've used the sum all the way down and the average FS is exactly the same. So rather than the sum part that we had here, if we just change this into the average, um, that works exactly the same. So we can just get the averages there if you wanted to do rather than the sums. And it's just an easy kind of flick over. If you wanted to change them, they work and uh, kind of bring everything together exactly the same as the sums. But like I say, it's just changing the sum for the average if or the average if s. Um, but the counts work a little bit differently and we'll go on to them now. So now when we're working on the count functions, um, this is a little bit different. So we can see that we have here just a one. So we can pop in the count function that we might need here. And we can see that we get different things. So in the right one, so we have the count if there. And what we need to do now is the count if. And once we have the range, we need the criteria, which we'll pop in. Uh, we can see we have five. And if we needed to put in more than one criteria, we can use the count IFS, um, where we have the criteria range of one. There we are. So we need to make sure that the region works on this one. And we have the region there. We have the criteria range now. So where we're going to find the white shirt, we're going to find this here in column B and this one here. So we can press that there. And then the final one that we need to include is the USA. So we can copy that over once again, um, just double click into it and we can just kick some stuff about a little bit and just see where this is because we know that we have all the criteria from before, but we just need to add in this final part here just to make sure that it's within the UK, uh, sorry, within the USA. And we can see that we get two there in total. So hopefully that helps. If you've got any questions at all within using the sum if, ifs, average ifs, anything like that, then uh, don't forget to give us a shout out and uh, we'll get a comment there and get back to you as quick as we can. But thanks a lot for watching and we'll hopefully see you again soon.